with all that we know about God, isn't it amazing that we seem to not know anything at all? With all the experiences that we've experienced, and we ask that question, why me? Isn't it amazing that God says he's able to make all of those negative experiences work for your good? That's amazing to me. And as we sit here this morning, I don't want to rush, but I'm going to have to make points real fast. So if I miss you that are taking notes, please get the tape. Because I want to deal with something that We've been talking about change. And as I've been talking about change and researching information and finding things that God would have me to minister to his people, he took me back to some previous information about dimensional living. And I want to talk to you this morning about another level. As we talk about change, I want to talk about another dimension. Somebody tell the person next to you another dimension of living. Yes, that's what we want to talk about. In the text, he says in verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and you being rooted and grounded in this thing we call love may be able to comprehend with all the saints. And then he starts dealing with what? Dimensions. He deals with the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. And I want to give you a definition of dimensions before I just run off crazy. A definition of dimension is a measurement in one direction. Again, dimension is a measurement in one direction. A definition of dimension is the range or the degree. Somebody say range or degree. The range or the degree to which a thing exists or extends. So one dimension or the first dimension is a straight line and we go to second dimension and the third dimension is what we would consider holograms and then some people would even as we get into physics say the fourth dimension is time. There is another dimension of living that I want to talk to you about because my next definition is the level or existence or the consciousness of a thing is another dimension. And as we go to another dimension, I want to give you four and the fifth one is where I need us all to get. First dimension I want to share with you is the dimension of thought. In the beginning... Okay, was the word, the logos, the intellect, the reasoning, the, the concepts, and the idea. In the beginning was the logos. It is God in his infinite wisdom and intellect, the thought. And the problem and the challenge is sometimes our thoughts are the thing that causes us to go astray. Okay, because at once man was made and he was innocent. His thoughts were continually on God. He was what we would consider to be God conscious. He did not have another thought other than to do the will of God. When he sinned, he lost that spiritual connection with God, what we call innocence, and he began to move in the dispensation of consciousness. Now all of a sudden he's conscious of himself. He is naked. He is conscious of his environment. And that's the first dimension of living. A lot of times people are always self-conscious. When a person is self-conscious, now there are insecurities and fears that come when a person is on that dimension of living. You start caring more about what people say about you and what people think about you than you are concerned about what God says and his view of you. You start trying to figure things out and figure things out on your own apart from God. The Bible tells us as we move down through this dimension of living uh, in Genesis about chapter 6 it says the thoughts and the intentions of man were continually evil all the time. And so on this dimension of living, you've got to really understand now the warfare is in my mind because I'm thinking thoughts that God are not thinking. 
I've got concerns that God has no concern with at all. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the thoughts that I think concerning you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end or a hope and a future concerning the NIV version. A lot of times individuals will sit down and ponder and reflect on things in their mind and they come up with three or four negative results and negative outcomes of a situation and it takes a whole lot of prayer before you can figure out or reason or fathom one good alternative that can come from this situation. Uh, somebody say another dimension of living. And so we've got to move now. We've got to get our mind back into focus because the, we've got to get back the mind of God and we've got to start understanding his intentions. We've got to get back to using our mental cognitive capacities to use or them for the process of what we call discovering. Somebody say the process of discovering. Yeah, we've got to learn how to think right now. The process of discovering uses all the facts and all the information. And we think now because we have to use our capacity in our mind to discover the unknown. Uh, that's what thinking does. Um, thinking causes you now uh, to put in focus things that are relative and real. Uh, and when you ponder them and when you reflect on them um, and you use the right cognitive processes, what you discover is a truth and a reality that you did not know before. But when you begin to think right, all of a sudden you discover a truth that was not there originally and I never thought about that. That's what we have to be able to do now. We have to use our mental capacity and we've got to create now for ourselves based on what the word of God says because on the next dimension, things don't always line up with what you think. So you move now from the dimension of thought into what we call the dimension of circumstance. Somebody say circumstance. Because now um, you've used your own way of thinking to move and to make some choices. You've thought about it and all of a sudden you made this choice. And all of a sudden the choice you made, um, we realized it was a wrong choice. And when it was a wrong choice, now guess what you got to deal with? You got to deal with the consequences and the circumstances of our choices. And that's what Adam did. When he became self-conscious and aware of his surroundings, what he had to do now because he had made a choice contrary to obeying God, he was now forced to deal with the circumstance of being kicked out of the garden. Yeah, he finds himself now hiding from God. God comes to him in the cool of the day and says where are you Adam? He said I was naked and I heard your voice and I hid myself from your presence. Who told you that you were naked? Somebody say circumstances. Circumstances now are defined as realities in time. They are situations in our lives that are relative to the conditions of our heart. I'm in these circumstances because of how I felt at the time I made my choice. Yeah, these things that are in my life now are present with me because at the time a few weeks ago I thought or I felt like doing something and as a result of my thoughts and my feelings I acted in a way that has brought about certain circumstances. Let's deal with the truths now and stop blaming mama and daddy the boss on the job friends. Let's stop blaming husband wife, boyfriend and girlfriend and deal with the reality of uh, our choices. Somebody say, I'm going to another level. 
Yeah, I'm going to another level this morning, I promise you. Because now, the process of thinking, what I've got to be able to do now, um, I've got to form and conceive in my mind rather than using my five senses. Uh, most people are so sensual and so carnal, and in the church, we're so soulish that we think because we feel a certain way, it's okay. And because we think a certain way, it's all right. Because what we've done, we've got the cart before the horse. We go to church and the preacher talks so bad about what we do. We feel that if I stop doing certain things, I'm going to be all right. Well, no, that's not the right way. What you've got to do before you stop doing certain things, you've got to stop thinking about why it is that you did what you did. You can stop a behavior, but only for so long if you don't be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You'll stop it, you'll grit your teeth every time it come around or they say it, you'll, mm, you'll quench it. But if you just renew your mind, after a while, you won't even think that doing that is okay anymore. Your mind will be transformed to the point where when you start feeling certain ways, you won't let yourself think like that any longer. Why? Because I remember how I felt after I did it yeah yeah so my mind and the mental activity of my mind uh, I am responsible with coming up for ideas and I am responsible for my own imagination and I am responsible to stay conscious I'm gonna say that again uh, you are responsible for your own ideas and you are responsible for the way you allow your mind to take flight and imagine all kind of stuff uh, but you are more so responsible for staying conscious of God and his word and his will most people are unconscious walking around not conscious of a God that gives you breath what in the world were you thinking when you did that what in the world was going on in your mind that caused you to make that choice you must have really been going through in your emotions you were really unstable when you made a conscious decision to do that Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so now, the mental concepts that we form in our mind, let me tell you what your mind is responsible for. Your mind and your capacity to use your mind is responsible for five things. I said one already, your imagination. Okay, your imagination. You have to think right. Most people fantasize, they don't think. Most people are caught up in fantasy. They don't think. Fantasy is unrealistic. God can't even make that happen. That's unreal. I'm going to say that again. God's not going to make that happen because that is unreal or unrealistic. That does not exist on any level. Your imagination. Number two, your mind is responsible for solving problems. Your mind is the greatest computer ever created. Because when it thinks right, it has the ability to solve problems. Your mind has, number three, the intellectual capacity to learn. You can gather information and based on it, you compute it and you can learn. <laughs> you can learn. Your mind, number four, has the ability to create. It's creative idealistic you can create things in your mind and the last thing is to remember your mind has the capacity to memorize and that this is the thing that brings most Christians into bondage because you keep remembering wrong stuff <laughs> That's why Paul says, forgetting those things that are behind me 
and I press forward to the mark of the prize of the high call. To forget means to intentionally make my mind not remember. I am not going to allow myself to remember because when I start remembering, I start feeling. Oh God. And when you, you can't remember without feeling. The problem is, as soon as we start remembering things, we get angry again. And as soon as we start remembering, we get mad all over again. And all of a sudden, the old wound becomes fresh. And so when I start remembering, I start getting, ooh, a little, ooh, ooh, oh God. Oh yeah, oh. oh. The mind has the ability to do something, and I want to use this word in the positive context now. Somebody say manipulate. Yeah, manipulate. Manipulation is not always wrong. It's only wrong when you manipulate and use to hurt someone else and take advantage. But the mind has the ability to manipulate information to discover what's unknown. And that's the kind of healthy manipulation when you go to a chiropractor. When you go to a chiropractor and your spine is crooked, you've got scoliosis or you've got a vertebrae or a disc that's out of place. What the, what the chiropractor does is he manipulates that's right. He manipulates the muscles and he manipulates and all of a sudden what was crooked now becomes straight. And that's what your mind has the capacity to do. It has the capacity to manipulate all that crooked stuff, all the errors and all the lies. Your mind has the ability to discard everything that does not line up with the will and the word and the power of God. And when you allow your mind to function in the right cognitive way it manipulates information and all of a sudden you discover God really does love me in spite of what I've done God really doesn't love me in spite of what they say about me God really doesn't love me in spite of my proclivity and when you realize he loves you then you say behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon me that he has now made me his child oh my God what shall separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus look at somebody and say another dimension another dimension and so now we move when we get the right thought process and we understand now that circumstances circumstances are um, things and conditions that accompany facts things and conditions that accompany facts I'm going to say that again Things and conditions that accompany facts or events. So in other words, the fact is they lied on you. The event is somebody touched you. So the fact that they lied on you is going to create a certain condition. I promise. The fact that they touched you is going to create a certain condition. We see it every day. And you've got to understand that sometimes God, somebody say God, God allows circumstances to move you to another dimension. It was a critical circumstance that Joseph found himself in because his brothers knew his father loved him more. And these unfortunate circumstances that befell Joseph was for others' benefit. Sometimes you got to understand when you're in a dimension of circumstance and use these realities to provoke you to actions and not get all touchy-feely because somebody's treating you wrong. You got to make sure that when you are in the dimension of circumstance that you reflect on the word of God and don't allow circumstances to control you but you have the fortitude of character to remain strong in the Lord and the power of his might no matter what circumstance befalls your life. If you don't remain
being God conscious when circumstances come up you're going to react to your circumstance become a victim of your circumstance as opposed to controlling your circumstance and let your circumstance work to your betterment don't you know once again he's able to make all things work together for your good look at somebody and say another dimension of living I wish I would have had somebody spiritual enough to sit me down and tell me the information that just because you did it and just because you're going through it doesn't mean that God can't use you and God won't work it out and you won't come out for I hear Joe say after he has tried me up and when I get through with these circumstances I'm gonna come forth as pure gold look at somebody and say I know you're going through right now but go all the way through and come on out that's right go all the way through don't stop in the middle of your circumstance don't stop right at the break of deliverance go all the way through the circumstance until Christ be formed on the inside of you another dimension another dimension another dimension I can't allow you this morning to be stuck in your circumstances. I can't allow you to get all the way to the point where you realize you need help and don't get the help you need. Oh, that's right. How do I allow myself to become a victim? Huh? No, you will be a victim. It's not allowing yourself. So the question is not how do you allow, but how do you allow yourself to become a victor? And not a victim couple of things you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart you got to believe that all things are working together for your good but the last way to become a victor and not a victim is you got to learn to be humble how are you gonna be in that circumstance how are you gonna be broke and needy and act like you don't need no help. How are you gonna be locked up in jail and mad at everybody else? How are you gonna be homeless and mad cause nobody wanna give you a quarter? How you going to be mean and selfish right. and mad because somebody else is married and you not? You selfish. Somebody say circumstance. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a time for circumstances to come. And in this time of circumstance, it's going to push you to your next level. It's only through certain circumstance that you're going to be forged and, and made into the image of God. Somebody say time. Time identifies your season to change. I'm going to say it again. Time identifies your season to change to push you to your next dimension. Y'all know that winter lasts so long and summer lasts so long, so you being broke should only last so long. Spring only lasts so long, fall only lasts so long, so your being mad should only last so long. Your frustration should only last so long. Your discouragement should only last so long. And just the same way is you having resources. If you're not wise, it's only going to last so long. Time is going to pass you from season into purpose if you understand dimensional living. Time advances us in our season to what we call a divine appointment. And if you allow yourself not to be so focused on circumstance, you will realize these circumstances have ushered me right into the presence of God. 
I trust that the last time you found yourself in a bad way that you called on God and he heard you and so it moves us now into this next dimension somebody say next dimension and I'm trying to get there and then this dimension it's because of how you thought about your problem and all of a sudden your thinking brought a circumstance in your life and the circumstance now is going to catapult you right into the dimension of faith somebody say faith faith comes by hearing and hearing a word of the Lord once again dimension is a level of existence or a level of consciousness and what we have to be able to do now is be conscious conscious of a spiritual existing that God has prepared somebody say it's prepared it's prepared for you it's prepared for me it's prepared for the person behind you it's already prepared let me give you the definition of prepared. It means to make ready before. So if it's prepared, it was made ready before you got here. If it was prepared, it was made ready before you got married. It was ready before you had kids. It was ready before you got grown. It was ready before you got educated. Matter of fact, it was ready before you got saved. It was prepared. It was ready before. To prepare means to put in a proper state of mind. So the problem is, are you prepared for your miracle? Do you have the right state of mind to even welcome a blessing? Are you in the right state of mind for your future mate? Are you in the right state of mind for an anointing or for success? To prepare means to subject to a special process or treatment. I've got to subject my mind to a special process and to a special treatment. What are you talking about? I've got to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I've got to prepare myself for the weight of glory that God is about to thrust on me. I've got to prepare myself for an anointing that I've never walked in before. I've got to prepare myself for revelations and see myself like I've never seen myself before. And you've got to do the same thing too. If you're going to go to another level, your faith now has to be extended beyond what you know about yourself. And you've got to stretch yourself now and see yourself in the light like you've never seen yourself before you've got to see yourself doing things you never imagined yourself doing before you've got to know that the word of God says these signs shall follow them that believe you can you imagine yourself laying hands on somebody that's sick and watching them recover can you imagine yourself speaking words by the power of God and watching people be delivered simply because you said come out and enter into them no more can you see yourself speaking to yourself in the mirror telling yourself I am the righteousness of God I am healed I will overcome I will be saved I am more than a conqueror can you see yourself speaking to yourself telling yourself things and knowing that your life and death is in your own tongue do you have the power to speak to your own self or are you just waiting for a preacher to prophesy to you do you have the faith to speak to your own mountains and tell your own mountains be thou removed and cast into the sea do you have enough faith in yourself yeah somebody say another dimension so that's why some of us are bound by religion because we haven't been taught how to exercise our own faith in our own self and the text says that grant 
God would grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. In other words, I got something on the inside now that won't let me fail. I got something on the inside now that won't let me think the way I used to think. Does anybody have something on the inside that won't even let you act on those feelings that you get every now and then? Got something on the inside and Paul says when I would do good he acknowledged that there was an evil that was present with him but he said oh wretched man that I am who's going to deliver me from the body of this death got something on the inside of me that's warring when I want to do the right thing I feel like doing wrong when I want to love I'm remembering how you treat me when I want to forgive I'm thinking about and remembering how you lied oh if anybody in here tried to do right and all of a sudden that old nature that old man started springing up and wouldn't let you forgive and wouldn't let you forget and wouldn't let you love but the devil is alive we thank God through Christ Jesus who has given us the victory over ourselves got victory over my own mind this morning anybody got victory over their mind come on let's go to another level now my mind used to play tricks on me my mind used to deceive me but no longer because I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind on a whole nother level now. How did you get there? Because he loved me. I'm on the dimension of love this morning. Somebody say love. The songwriter said it was love that lifted me. Love lifted me. Love is carrying me. Love is healing me. And I'm not on that level no more. I'm on a level of love. I'm living in the dimension of love this morning and the Bible says by this shall all men know that we are his disciples because we have love one to another so when you frustrate me I'm going to love you when you lie on me I'm going to love you when you treat something so you got to do the same thing too. When they talk about you, love them. When they lie on you, love them. When they love them. When they forsake you, love them. When they set up plots against you, love them. When they despise you, love them. Yeah. Y'all sit down. I got to stop. I ain't even finished, but I just have to stop. The Bible says, for God so loved that two-letter words, so. Antos. Yeah, that word there, so. For God so loved. See, it's the little things we call in grammar, the little things etymologically that we miss and we skip for God and we get right to the love, but it says for God so love, yeah. See, that would in our vocabulary be what we would call an adjective. For God so loved. And what that means is for God in this manner loved. Yeah, 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 yeah. For God, with this intention, loved. For God so loved. In this magnitude, for God so loved. And that's what we need to understand. Our love now needs to be intentional. I intend on loving you like nobody else can, although you don't even know who I am. I'm going to love you and demonstrate a love that you are not even familiar with. I'm going to display a love 
love that's going to turn the world upside down. That's the dimension I'm living on now. I'm living on a dimension called love that has the power to transform you into something you didn't even know you could ever be until you experience a love like this. Anybody got that kind of power in your love? Can anybody love somebody until their nature change, character change, behavior change, thought process change, feelings change? That's what we've got to be able to do now. Somebody say another dimension of living. That's what we need. Don't tell me you love me. Prove that you love me. Don't talk about love. Show love. Don't just write and sing about love. Don't dance every time somebody say love. Act like you love. Come on, tell the person next to you, act like you love me. And when I say act in this context, I'm not talking about performing. I'm talking about demonstrating. Yeah, don't just be performing and going along with some perfunctory duty and just doing everything that everybody do because it's traditional. No, demonstrate that you really got some power in the way you love me. Love me to the point where I don't even feel like being myself no more. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what we need in the church. We need men and women of God that can demonstrate a love that only comes from God. And when we demonstrate that kind of love, it causes people not to be able to be their normal and natural self. You can't be what you used to be around me because I love you too much. Oh, I hate, I gotta go. Oh yeah, let me tell you why I say this. Because I found out something about the power of love. My Bible says, perfect love casts out all fear. You can't be afraid when I'm around you because I love you too much to let you think negative about anything that's going on in your life. You're not gonna be afraid to live. You're not gonna be afraid to trust. You're not gonna be afraid 